Hello everyone here at OS Reviews, you're watching our video review of the Huawei Mate 10 Pro, a flagship from the Chinese telecommunications giant, which is actually the number one selling brand in China, believe it or not, despite lacking a stronger presence in many Western countries, including the US. But the Mate 10 Pro, along with the P20 and P20 Pro, hopes to change that perception. Now, one of the reasons why we're taking a look at this phone, which was released in late 2017, as opposed to the aforementioned P20, is because you actually can't get the P20 officially. You can get the Mate 10 Pro through Amazon, through Best Buy, through many other official vendors, but uh, unfortunately the P-Series haven't been launched by Huawei yet in these states. And as a result, if you want to get your hands on one of those, you have to pick it up through a third-party distributor, often without the warranty that an official device like this warrants. Luckily, the Mate 10 Pro has most of the features that uh, Huawei's newer P20 delivers, including the same processing power underneath the hood, which includes the Kirin 970 chipset, which is their in-house processor that tries to compete with other upscale CPUs like the Snapdragon 845, for instance. And although in synthetic benchmarks it comes a little bit short, in terms of day-to-day -day use, it's a very snappy and lucid experience even when gaming and performing heavy benchmark-inducing tasks. Other unique elements of the Mate 10 Pro include the built-in AI functionality. In fact, the Kirin 970 was one of the first chipsets to include built-in AI. What that means in layman's terms is that if you're using the camera, it's able to detect scenes automatically and recognize objects. So for instance, if I put a cat, a dog, or a picture of a food in front of the cameras, it will detect that and adjust the mode accordingly in the cameras to take the best snapshot. Furthermore, it's able to do instant translation among other battery optimization and performance optimization tasks under underneath the hood, learning your usage behavior. Speaking of battery, it's another highlight for the Mate 10 Pro. It packs an impressive 4000 mAh pack, which is significantly larger than the competition, with phones like the Galaxy S9 and LG's new G7 coming in at around 3200-3500 mAh, this thing will last significantly longer. Part of that is helped with the display, which is not only an AMOLED panel, and that means when it's displaying colors that are darker, it uses less energy, but it's also a full 1080p screen as opposed to 2K or Quad HD. To be perfectly honest, in day-to-day -day usage, it's still a very sharp, vibrant, and impressive display. Unless you're, unless you're doing VR tasks that are super close to your eyes, you really won't notice the difference. And again, it conserves on battery, which I think is more important in the actual day-to-day -day use experience. Now, let's start with the design of the phone. So as you can see, it's a very shiny and reflective surface. Uh, Huawei is using what they call curved 3D glass, which is uh, just saying that it's a glass sandwich that uh, you can see is slightly curved along the edges. It's really shiny, reflective surface along with a palette of different colors that you can select from. Reminds me a little bit of the older HTC U11 series that kind of introduced this ultra shiny look. And it's a very attractive phone when clean, but it's a huge fingerprint magnet as well that will attract fingerprints and smudges very easily. On the front, we have an aforementioned OLED panel that is an 18 by 9 aspect ratio and runs 6 inches diagonally. Because the phone has very small bezels though, it has the same footprint as a slightly older 5.5 inch phone, making it still very easy to hold and tuck away into pockets and jeans. As a whole, the phone is very well constructed, as expected from a flagship level device with more heft than you probably think when you first take it out of the box. At the same time, the phone is also fairly durable despite looking quite delicate and because it has IP67 certification, which means it's water resistant. You can submerge in water for up to 30 minutes and it should survive. Pricing is yet another area where Huawei tries to undercut the competition. As an unlocked device that supports 4G LTE bands in the US, the Mate 10 Pro sells for only $650, which is significantly cheaper than the Samsung Galaxy S9, LG G7, iPhone 10, all these other flagship phones that it's trying to compete in the same level as, uh, which is quite impressive for the Chinese OEM. Alright, to so take a closer look on the edge here, we have access to a volume rocker and also a power switch. The power key also has a very interesting texture that's slightly grooved, making it easier to press and shows a lot of attention to detail. On the top, there's also an IR blaster that controls your TV and air conditioner sets. And on the back, we also have access to a lightning fast fingerprint scanner along with a Leica optics for the dual camera setup that includes a 20 and 12 megapixel sensor that captures both depth information as well as monochrome black and white images. And on the bottom, you have a USB Type-C that supports 
Huawei's proprietary supercharging technology that can juice you up very quickly in around 30 minutes. You can get an entire days of battery life out of it. But unfortunately, it lacks a standard 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And that means if you want to use your regular headphones, you have to use an adapter or opt for Bluetooth. There's also a loudspeaker on the bottom, although the earpiece here also serves as a secondary speaker when you're holding the phone in this horizontal orientation. And it creates a pretty immersive listening experience, a little bit reminiscent of the iPhone 10 and HTC's boom sound speakers. So again, nice audio on Huawei's part. All right, so launching into the software experience next, obviously we have a very heavy skin on top of Android that's uh, called EMUI, and it's actually on top of Android version 8.0 Oreo. So we do have quite a few additions such as long holding on certain apps in a forced touch inspired view that gives us quick launch shortcuts among others. It's a uh, pretty up to date and current in terms of security and other settings, but it's not gonna be everyone's cup of tea, especially if you want a more stock experience. Uh, although you could always use a different launcher if you prefer that. But EMUI claims to be a very simple, straightforward experience that in Huawei's words, uh, allows you to do things in three steps or less. And they've built in quite a few gestures that can assist you in performing various tasks. For instance, photography is one of the key features of this phone with and the Mate 10 Pro along with the P20 absolutely have two of the best cameras out of any smartphone on the market right now. So that's very exciting. And to capitalize on that, even when the phone's display is off, you can instantly launch the camera in 10 seconds or less by double tapping on the volume rocker down key for two times. And you can see there, it will take an image right there in 0.7 seconds. It can take it in 0.4 seconds if you're out in broad daylight. Another unique feature is using your knuckle to access gestures. For instance, I can draw a shape using my knuckle and that will save it as a screenshot uh, for future use. I can also use it to draw a line to access a split screen view for multitasking or draw certain letters and shapes to go into specific apps. So there's a lot of optimization going on. Huawei's wallpapers on the, main, on the lock screen also changes each time that you unlock the device. That kind of changes up the overall experience. All right, so immediately we can tell that the display, again, even though it's a full, H full HD panel and not quad HD, is plenty sharp and vibrant with great contrast because it is, again, an AMOLED display. One of the most impressive things, though, is how bright it gets. At full brightness, this is extremely easy to see even under direct sunlight and in outdoor visibility. Compared to the iPhone 8, it was a lot easier to see this in completely bright environments, and that's a kudos to Huawei. Now, EMUI does include also a lot of other features as well as pre-included apps that not everyone is going to use, similar to Samsung's TouchWiz. And in that sense, again, it's not going to be quite as clean as a stock install of Android, where there's a bit more redundancy between some of the apps, and of course, the UI and visuals have been tweaked to a large extent. It reminds us a little bit of iOS, but that might not be such a bad thing, especially for first-time smartphone users, since it is quite intuitive to understand and get used to. Uh, we do have access to all the standard Google tools and apps, however, pre-installed, including access to the uh, Play Store, Google Photos, there's NFC, so you can use it for mobile payment, uh, among other YouTube and uh, Google services are on board. But you also have a suite of uh, Huawei-specific apps and utility tools that have been redesigned from the ground up, in addition to social media tools like Facebook Messenger, as well as Instagram, that have been all pre-included what it does have, though, is a swipe down gesture, just like on iOS, that pulls down an instant search feature that can universally search through your apps, notifications, the internet, as well as scan QR codes on the fly. So it's actually a pretty handy little feature. The notification shade has also been slightly tweaked, and in this particular shade, which matches the blue version of the phone that we have here, I have to say I do like the overall aesthetic and look, allowing us to change some of these quick profiles when on the go. All right, so let's talk about the camera performance first, and that's, since that really is one of the key tenants that uh, Huawei were stressing with the Mate 10 Pro. And the interface itself is quite clean. On the very top, there's a dot that I can tap on to instantly switch back and forth between one and two times optical zoom, and you can zoom in even more, but that's using digital and degrades the resolution a little bit more. I can swipe towards the left to access some quick modes, such as using the monochrome black and white sensor, turning on HDR, there's also a panoramic mode, time-lapse, slow motion, so on and so forth.
I can swipe to the right to change things like the resolution, the watermark, as well as uh, some additional advanced settings like object tracking. And located on the bar here are some quick settings that you may want to toggle through for modes. So overall, the UI experience is quite simple to use, and it's a very responsive, it's quite quick. I can also access a pro mode for the photography by swiping up from the bottom little bar here. Revisiting some of these sample shots, as aforementioned, the Mate 10 Pro really is one of the best camera phones on the market, period. And it really does show because there's incredible detail that you can find, as well as very accurate and realistic looking shots, but still preserving a good amount of vividness and uh, nice saturation that are pleasing on the eyes. And it's uh, incredibly fast in terms of shutter speed and incredibly accurate, where you don't really have to tweak around with settings too much and it automatically does the work for you. So you can tell from some of these shots just, uh, how impressive the experience uh, turned out, even though we were technically moving around uh, when I was taking this shot. Overall photography experience and a great companion that will definitely inspire you to take more images than if you used another device. And that's also quite good because the Mate 10 Pro comes with a six uh, gigs of RAM along with 128 gigs of uh, built-in storage, which is, uh, in my opinion, more than sufficient, especially when complemented with, let's say, Google Drive that gives you free cloud storage as well. So it has more than enough memory to store all of this uh, precious memories. And even in darker environments, the camera still remains as impressive as ever without any blurriness to the edges and still plenty of detail even if I zoom and crop all the way in at 100%. And compared to, again, many other smartphones in the same flagship level tier, the Mate 10 Pro more than holds its own. Speaking of night photography, this was shot around midnight and it was pitch black outside. I used the night mode on the Mate 10 Pro and you can just tell how well the shot came out and how vivid all the colors look as if it was captured uh, almost closer to daylight. You're also able to slow down the shutter speed in the dark and capture streams of light in this avant-garde like fashion to get some very creative looking shots uh, as cars move into the background. Final observations about the camera, the AI recognition seems to work very well. So you can see here that the flower here is recognized almost instantly. It uh, snaps into focus quickly as well and you can see it's popped into view. And that means the phone will now uh, change its properties so that it brings out a bit more colors when shooting a flower as opposed to a leaf or food. And same thing goes with, let's say, text. It's able to recognize that as well down below there. And uh, if we talk a little bit more about the front-facing camera as well, it's also quite good, but not as strong as the rear-facing cameras because it's not using the same kind of neural processing unit. It doesn't have the same AI detection features, but what it does have is also a bokeh-like effect. So you're able to blur out the background when you're capturing selfies of yourself. Uh, with that being said, it does have a tendency to overexpose a little bit more than what I'd like. Uh, images turn out to be slightly brighter than they are in real life, especially if you're pointing it at a source of light in the background uh, compared to phones like the P10, for instance, which I thought compensated a little bit better. So that's an area where Huawei may need to work a bit more on their algorithms. Now, one other area where the AI comes into play with photography is actually in the albums. So for instance, you can see here under the Discover tab, it's automatically classified uh, using ge geotagging that I was in many different cities over the past few days, and it's now sorted all those photos by location. That's not really the new thing. The new thing is that it's also able to classify food. So all the shots with food in them, you can now tap on, and it's in one album. And all of this means that the overall photography and camera experience, both with the hardware as well as the software, are both excellent and impressive. All right, so now let's talk about the performance when it comes to web browsing, as well as just day-to-day -day use. Now, Huawei claims that part of the neuroprocessing unit is also important because it helps the device stay fast. Because as we know, phones, especially Android phones, has a tendency to get slower and slower as uh, days go into months and months go into years. But Huawei claims that that's not going to be the case with the Mate 10 Pro and that uh, it will still remain as fast as ever. Obviously, we didn't have that long of a period to completely test this out, but I can say that after using this phone extensively over the past two weeks, I came away fairly impressed with how well uh, it's uh, remained fairly quick. But then again, it's still using a top-of-the-line SoC, and 6 gigs of RAM on a smartphone, to be completely honest, is still on the overkill side just because it's more than what even many laptops offer today. And it uh, still remains a very fast and fluid experience even as you're transitioning between a handful of apps and games running together in the background. Everything remains sharp, and despite using an AMOLED panel, there's not too much color shifting either. Even if you try and tilt it at fairly extreme angles, you only notice a slight bluish hue when you're looking at almost 180 degrees. And now for the video playback and media consumption experience, along with a test of the speaker quality on the Mate 10 Pro. So this is in the portrait view, where sound is only coming out from the bottom.
and now you can hear that sound is coming out from both the earpiece and on the speaker below. One of the more impressive things is that the phone almost resonates uh, and vibrates ever so slightly when you're holding it. It seems like sound is going through the back and it's uh, kind of vibrating along the back. So when you're holding the phone, you almost feel the beats uh, as well as the thump as the track plays. So it really is a impressive and interesting audio experience that you have to try out to really realize what I'm saying here. Another quick video sample that again shows off the impressive uh, display that they have here, which is again AMOLED but not super AMOLED like what Samsung is using on their Galaxy S9, which may have a slightly punchier contrast but also not quite as realistic uh, or accurate to the eye. Um, so on here again it's a very impressive display. The corners on this particular phone are sharp though as opposed to rounded off. Not that that's a you know, very important detail at all. It's mostly an aesthetic difference, which is something I wanted to point out. Otherwise, the screen is quite sensitive. It's easy to use, you know, despite the waterproofing capabilities. It supports 10 fingers in terms of multi-touch, and uh, you can split screen, again, to have two programs running at the same time if you want to access that. Call quality on the Mate 10 Pro is also excellent. I consistently got around 3 to 4 bars of reception using both T-Mobile and AT&T, both in the Seattle and San Francisco regions, and I came across impressed with both the microphone and, of course, the reception quality. And as a result, callers said that they heard our voices very well, it sounded clean, it almost sounded like we were calling on a LAN phone as opposed to a cellular device. Other utility tools like the calendar is also synced with your appointments through Google. So if you have any holidays in addition to appointments, it's also pushed across onto even Huawei's proprietary app. So everything just feels very cohesive and uh, works quite well as an entire ecosystem. Other shortcuts including long holding on the home key to access the Google Assistant for quick AI voice searches is also fully functioning here without any problems. As with any flagship phone, there's a lot of adjustments that can be made if you want to dig deeper. For instance, in settings, you can even change the color temperature if you to recalibrate that according to your likings. So take for example when you're listening to music in the audio player and uh, now you go into multitasking, something like that, and you decide to go home. Well all of a sudden you have a strangely inverted wallpaper and it takes a few seconds for it to realize that the wallpaper needs to flip back. And maybe part of the fault would be from the app developer just because again the majority of phones would probably use a MediaTek or a Qualcomm Snapdragon chipset and so this is definitely in the minority when it comes to the support. But gaming and graphics are also no problem thanks to the Kirin 970 and it simply zips through all of the latest uh, and greatest games as well as titles that you can find in the Play Store and everything remains very smooth, fast, and responsive even with many apps running in the background. As you can see here, I can instantly jump into the app again, and there is no closing up, there's no stuttering at all, and uh, everything just feels quite snappy and smooth. And one of the best things really about the neuro processing unit, as well as uh, having an in-house CPU, is that they're able to more carefully test things. And in this case, there really is no cases of uh, thermal throttling at all. The phone remains cool in terms of temperature, even when you're demanding very heavy games. So that's more or less the Huawei Mate 10 Pro. Pro. I guess the best thing about this phone is just really how well-rounded it feels as a flagship should when it comes to the display, the audio, the battery, the performance, all being things that you really can't fault. And that's what makes this phone so compelling, especially as a value proposition at $650 unlocked compared to the competition. Especially when you just hold this phone and you look at it, it's really not inferior in any way compared to the more established brands as we know it in the US. So thanks for watching this video here at OS Reviews. You can check out more details in the links down below, and there's also more comparisons as well as the software tips and tricks that we have rolling out soon on this channel. So be sure to stay tuned if you're more interested uh, on learning about Huawei's uh, EMUI and how it stacks up to some of the other popular mobile OS experiences. But for now, this has been our review. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. This has been the Huawei Mate 10 Pro.